Good morning. The Bishop of Toronto, Andrew Asbell, has designated this Sunday for our diocese, World Refugee Sunday, and has sent out a communique to the churches asking us all to reflect. And I suppose ask God how he may be calling us in these times. According to the UN High Commission on Refugees, there are 82.4 million forcibly displaced people worldwide, nearly half of whom are children under the age of 18. We've all seen the videos, the photos and headlines over the past year. Afghanistan falling to the Taliban last August, civil war ravaging Ethiopia, and most recently Russia's continuing assault on Ukraine, not to mention ongoing conflicts in other parts of the world. The need is greater than ever. And hospitality toward the stranger and foreigner is a theme that runs through scripture. In the Torah, the people of Israel were reminded to welcome the stranger and sojourner, remembering their own history in the land of Egypt. Jesus, who was a child, was himself a refugee, fleeing to Egypt to escape the evil King Herod, reminds us that to welcome the stranger is to welcome Jesus in our midst. Canada is a world leader in refugee resettlement and was the first nation to offer the private sponsorship of refugees program. The Bishop says what many may not realize is that this program started over 40 years ago when it was the churches that stepped forward to sign private sponsorship agreements with the federal government. Today, faith groups still make up the majority of over 120 sponsorship agreement holders in Canada. Here in our diocese, we've been privileged to carry out this ministry for over 35 years in partnership with the Anglican United Refugee Alliance, or Aurora. Aurora brings together refugees in need with parishes willing to sponsor them and supports parishes through the sponsorship process. In place of a sermon this morning, we'll be hearing from a retired priest in the diocese who works on the board of Aurora, along with a refugee from Afghanistan. Our world, in many parts of it, has become a dangerous place. Life seems more complicated these days. Many are feeling lost and confused. We've entered a new era. And then there is that scriptural imperative found in Luke 12, 48, when Jesus says, when someone has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. What does our God require of us? And in these times, where do we go from here, Lord? Where do we go from here? Oh Lord, let our prayers be set forth in your sight as incense. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O oh, come, let us worship. Our collect for today is, Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the way of his commandments, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to offer up the prayers of the people early in this service. Let us pray. God of life and freedom, when Abraham's family wandered, when Moses took refuge in the desert, when the Hebrew people fled into the wilderness, when the Israelites lived in exile, you called them and gave them words of comfort, promises of hope, 
and shelter under your everlasting arms. In Christ, you crossed the border. You put on frail flesh and were born and lived your life always on the move in a dangerous world. From your first sleep or from your first night, you slept in a bed and a place that was not your own. You and your family fled terror and found refuge in foreign lands. You were not always sure of your next meal. We remember before you the millions of people whose lives are more like yours than we can imagine or care to acknowledge. Those who are without homes, who have been uprooted from their communities and countries, who have had to flee for their lives, who have left families and friends, who live precarious lives. We pray for your protection and care for those who suffer and must take refuge because of war, politics, natural disaster, status, race, gender, sexuality, and faith. We remember before you those separated from their families, children removed from their parents, siblings lost to one another, spouses and friends separated. We mourn and are angered by the loss that marks the lives of so many. The loss of dignity, of respect, of security, of community, of family and of stability. We pray for the people of Ukraine and all the other countries in the world where there is conflict and danger. We pray that as members of Christ Church, we may not be indifferent or naive afraid or overwhelmed, discouraged or blind to hope and options to help, or silent in the call for justice. You have made us citizens of your kingdom. Open our hearts and our doors to receive the stranger, the widow and the orphan and all who are dear to you and strengthen us to witness to the love of God for all people and open our mouths to call for justice. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now for the promises of God found in scripture, a reading from the book of Revelation 21, one to six, the new Jerusalem. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a shout, a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow, or crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for he issued his command, and they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars wild animals and all livestock, 
small scurrying animals and birds. Kings of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of, of the earth. Young men and young women, old men and children. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones. The people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 13, verses 35, 31 to 35. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is where Jesus predicts Peter's denial. As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the Son, he will give his own glory to the Son, and he will do so at once. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I am going. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. My name is uh, Stephen Drakeford. I'm one of the board members for Aura, that is Anglican United Refugee Alliance. And for a little while now, Aura has wanted to have a series of interviews with, uh, with people who have been sponsored, who have been helped by, uh, by the organization. And so we begin at, uh, at, this, uh, at this time. Currently, we're in the uh, glorious parish of uh, St. Anne on, uh, on Gladstone Avenue. St. Anne's has been particularly involved with, uh, with sponsoring refugees and refugee families. And so we're delighted that St. Anne's has uh, allowed us to use this space to have this, uh, this conversation. My first guest is, uh, is Ibrahim. And uh, we're going to have a conversation, a kind of a public, uh, public conversation. Like I used to say uh, to my congregation, think Oprah. Okay, we're having a conversation just like Oprah would, uh, would have a guest. So welcome, Abraham. I'm delighted to, uh, delighted to meet you and, uh, and have you here. Um, just how long have you been here in, uh, in Canada? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me You're here welcome. today. Yeah. Um, I have been for 17 years in Canada. 17 years? 17 years. And you came over as a, as a refugee yourself, right? That's right. Uh, first I came myself here as a refugee, and then later on I sponsored my family, and they came over here, and now I have my family, my wife and three kids. So, you, you've got, so you sponsored your wife and your three children? Three children. All from well, a, uh, two children, but two the children. third one was born here. Third one, another, another one <laughs> arrived here. So, that's, uh, so, so you sponsored your family. Right. Um, now, why did you come over? It, it, why did you come to Canada? It, it was 2007, you said? That was 2005, actually. 2005. Came, yeah, 17 years ago. Oh, well, um, the reason I came here because of, of my uh, life was in danger. Your life was in danger. In danger. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, as you see from my feature, I belong to a visible minority back in Afghanistan. We are Hazara. Hazara. Hazara are the um, um, religious and ethnic minority in Afghanistan that has been perpetually uh, persecuted for the, uh, over a century okay. from 1893 to 1890, um, 1891 to 1893, over 62% of Hazara people were slaughtered by the king called Abdurrahman. Huh. And since then, um, that mindset is that always they have been treated as a secondary citizen. And even during the Taliban, if you remember, um, in 1998, August, in mazar sharif over 10,000 in uh, Hazara people were killed on, in their houses and homes. And uh, later on, when uh, Taliban took power in, um, in Bamiyan or in Yakowlang, which are mainly Hazara residents, right. uh, they have, um, the atrocity is right. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so that is why um, most of Hazara people, including myself, uh, when they are um, coming as a refugee, the main reason is in order to survive and having um, to live in a, pe in, in in, a peaceful area or environment. 
I'm, I'm sorry for all that you and, and your, um, your family and, and your culture has, uh, has gone through. But why, why is there persecution of, of your people in particular? What's the, um, or is it long and complicated? <laughs> it, it is really complicated. First of all, uh, because um, uh, most of Hazara people, not all of them, uh, they are Shia Muslim. Okay. Uh, which is, a, uh, um, is another sect of uh, sure. Islam. And uh, second, uh, because they are very hardworking and uh, peace, love, and uh, very involved in education. Um, they are very talented. Mm -hmm. um, they are always uh, trying to be uh, civilized and uh, work in an environment where they can bring uh, results for the community. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in Afghanistan, power sharing is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, those people who are um, been the, um, in, the, in the power, they think that Afghanistan is, belongs to only one community and they are not willing to share the power, mm -hmm. and that's in order to um, block the other communities, such as Hazaras, to get into the power. That, that's why they are uh, con um, committing those atrocities mm. in order to avoid them to becoming educated or getting into the uh, power mm -hmm. or getting to, into the high rank level of the government. Uh, such as an example was recently in the 17th of Ramadan, which uh, I believe it was the 19th of uh, April in Kabul, in the west of Kabul, where is uh, mostly Hazara people. Um, in in Dashti Barchi, there was two explosions in front of two schools uh, uh -huh. that caused over 126 school kids killed and over 80 people were injured. And wounded. 126. 126, and unfortunately, in yeah. the international media, just announced six people. But that is, we have very uh, significant and proof that it was over 126 people were killed, mm -hmm. and all of them are school kids. Yeah. Um, and that's because you're Hazari. Because of the Hazari, okay. being okay. Hazari. Yeah. So it's very clear then that that you needed to get to get out of uh, Afghanistan and as many Hazari people. Is there a Hazari community here in, uh, uh, in Toronto? Yes, um, fortunately uh, since 2019 uh, we register a community called Canadian Hazara Humanitarian Services. Okay. Uh, this is um, a non-for-profit organization registered with the federal and provincial government and we are supporting the newcomers. Uh, we are trying to advocate for the rights of Hazara people, uh, both uh, internally and externally. Yeah. Um, so that is the community we have here um, right now. And however, there are some other small organizations, but we are the national leading uh, organization right. for Hazara, and um, mostly for Hazara, but uh, of course for uh, all uh, minorities. Right. Well, that's that's wonderful. So, so you've been you've been involved in building this uh, community. Well, I can I, tell by the twinkle in your eye that you're up to mischief, right. <laughs> and you get involved. Uh, I'm the co-founder co and the volunteer president. Well uh, yeah, president yeah. of this organization. Yeah. So you came to Canada in 2005. You mm -hmm. sponsored your family, mm -hmm. and I know that we're going to get to Aura in in a second. Uh, you've been involved in the community, and you continue to support your Hazara people uh, uh, here in uh, in Canada. And so, uh, what a contribution that you've made to to, uh, to the Hazari people in Canada, and to, indeed to uh, to Canada. So. Uh, mainly, that was the the purpose in order to uh, promote the culture of volunteerism among yeah. our community. Mm -hmm. That was the main goal, and that's why we uh, came together as a group of volunteers, like a grassroots, yeah. um, and we work in the community, supporting the new newcomers supporting the refugees um, in uh, different areas uh, from linguistic services to uh, transportation to housing registration with school finding doctors and later on that we found that we are capable of uh, contrib able to contribute in the community and um, volunteers were becoming more um, anxious in order to be mm -hmm. formally as a volunteer organization uh, volunteer based organization um, that's why we registered that organization, and we are now fully contributing into uh, uh, the community, especially after the fall of uh, Afghanistan yeah. in August 19, uh, August 2021. Right, 2021. Right. Uh, so lots of refugees arrived here, and mm -hmm. they were in need of help, and mm -hmm. we were uh, helping the refugees uh, along with the uh, Kosti, 
um, shoulder to shoulder, we were helping and our volunteers were in the hotels and where the refugees were there. Oh. And we were supporting them, uh, providing uh, donations, collecting donations, dropping in the donation center in the um, those sites and helping and assisting them. Wow, wow. Now, you, how did you get involved with Aura? Uh-huh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, in 20, uh, 2020, 2019, uh -huh. um, my, my, my brother and his family and also my mom was living in Afghanistan in Kabul and he was a businessman over there. Right. And as, as, as I mentioned before that because we are uh, belonging to Hazara community, they, we have always been um, uh, persecuted right. and also been uh, discriminated. There is a mm -hmm. systemic discrimination. If mm -hmm. an Af uh, Hazara, commun uh, Hazara uh, uh, community member is uh, getting uh, hurt or getting um, um, is in trouble, so there is not that much support and there is no safeguard for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, so he was was threatened and his life was in tre uh, uh, was threatened and uh, he was about to lose his life. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I was looking and he contacted me and then he left the country um, because he was a businessman and he could not um, uh, operate anymore and uh, that's why I came to Aura mm -hmm. um, and I asked that if there is uh, an opportunity to help me or okay, support my family to bring him over here and I'm very lucky that Aura was um, open uh, its door for me mm -hmm. and uh, supported my family and now my mother and my brother and his family is here living in So Canada. you were able to bring over your and bring to safety really your to brother safety. His family, and, and he has a wife and children? Uh, three children. And three yeah. children? Yeah. And your mother? And mother, yeah. Right, So right. a total of six people. Wow, wow. Yeah. So, then, so six more people are safe, and that's just an incredible yeah. relief mm -hmm. for you personally, but I think for the, uh, for the world. Um, you also mentioned that you have sisters as well that had to flee in right. August of uh, 2021, correct? Um, uh, yes, my mm -hmm. two sisters were still uh, living in Afghanistan, but after the fall of, uh, after this uh, incident, or actually that is a crisis yeah. that has happened yeah. in Afghanistan when Taliban took the power in August 2021, uh, they were not able to uh, live in, in, in Kabul and they have to flee the country. Uh, they are living in Pakistan right now, mm -hmm. um, looking uh, for sponsorship as well. Um, because uh, my, one of my sisters, they, she has two, two daughters and one son, and they are adult youngs. Um, one of them were, the uh, one of uh, my niece was a teacher in a, uh -huh. um, a private school, the other one was a university student. Yeah as well as my uh, nephew. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they were not able to um, be sponsored so far. Uh, we are w working and uh, looking for that to f find an opportunity or find a spot. Um, yeah, uh, the, the, the other sister, oh, she has also three children um, with her husband. Uh, they are also living right now in Pakistan. Um, they are, their life were also in danger because of uh, ethnicity and because they, one of my um, brother-in-law was working in a clinic as a security guard and unfortunately during the, um, when he was working, the Taliban came to loot the clinic mm -hmm. because that clinic was also located in the west of Kabul where there was Hazara community living. Um, they wanted to shut down the, 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 the clinic and because he was a security guard working there, see so his, he, he was got in, uh, in trouble mm. also. So they, the, the life overall for Hazara community in Afghanistan is really, really bad and yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. How long, just out of curiosity, how long have the Hazari people been in Afghanistan? From time immemorial? Or? Um, this is a question that nobody has a clear answer for yeah. that, but we, uh, our uh, Hazara community or Hazara people are the aboriginal uh, people of Afghanistan that uh -huh. has been there for a very, very, very long period of time. Right. Right. And then when Afghanistan the, or the modern Afghanistan was established with, uh, and then they were um, washed out from the cities and uh, pu pushed them to in the mountainous area, which mm -hmm. is ma mainly the central highland. Mm -hmm. And this is also called Hazaristan, uh, where, which belongs to Hazara people. Uh, but unfortunately, right now in the 21st century, even they are not allowed to live over there. Uh, probably you have heard about the, the news that in Daikundi, which is a main Hazara populated uh, uh, province, um, 300 families in once they were forced to leave the village, 
And because the Nomit or the Kuchis that are mainly Pashtuns, they are also coming because in 1891 and 1893, when 62% of Hazara people were killed and slaughtered, after that, their lands were given to Kuchis or Nomads. And uh, uh, later on, because of the revolution in Afghanistan in 70s and during Mujahideen, so um, the Hazara people had the power to control their own area. And now, because of the Taliban, everybody uh, is just uh, mm-hmm. fighting and struggling to survive. Yeah. And so the nomads and coaches are coming back in the area and yeah. forcefully and force the, the residents of the um, Hazara community or that uh, Hazaristan to leave that, mm-hmm. um, which happened in two, three um, provinces, including Ghazni, uh, Mazar Sharif, and Daikundi. Um, so the, the life of Hazara people in Afghanistan is always, almost always has been in danger, but yeah. right now because of the Taliban, Taliban it yeah. is it's really, really bad. Mm. Now to just to sort of again move to the other side of the ocean here, it's just fascinating to, for you to share with me that uh, information. Because I, I think, you know, in the news media, you sort of hear about these incidents and over there, but you don't really understand the context. And I know for me, and I hope for our viewers, um, you sort of given a little bit more context to uh, what actually is, uh, is, truly, uh, is truly going on. But let's move over to 2005, and you came to Canada. Why did you choose Canada? <laughs> <laughs> or was it chosen for you? <laughs> well, it was not because I, 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 fled, I fled the country and I was uh, trying to go in a safe country. Was, uh, my destiny was um, United States. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I came here I, at Toronto Pearson, um, so the custom and the immigration officer um, did not allow me to uh, travel. Mm-hmm. Um, and to go to the United States, mm-hmm. and that's why I claimed uh, refugee status here in Canada. And I'm very fortunate and I'm very, very lucky yeah. uh, that that happened. You know, yeah. sometimes uh, at that time I was disappointed because I was not able to go to my destination, but yeah. <laughs> I'm very lucky that now I'm here in Canada. Well, as I like to say, God works in all our lives, and you, you know, some things happen, and, and it turns out to be a, a better, a better option. Certainly, uh, certainly for us. So, you arrived in, at Pearson Airport, 2005. You're now staying in Canada. That's a surprise to you. What was your impression of uh, Canadians? What, 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 what are some of the things that you remember the most when you started? Uh, first a night when I came, um, because uh, I did not have a, a legal document. Uh, so, because of my unknown identity, um, so they put handcuff on my uh, no. yeah and oh. take me to the detention center. Oh. Um, but later on, when they identified me that as a safe person, so in eight hours I was released okay. from detention center. Yeah. So the inf- uh, first impression was not that not great. good. <laughs> <laughs> no, and and no. what was, was that was exactly on New Year's Eve. Um, uh, so it was 2005 New Year Eve. Um, but later on, um, I'm completely um, impressed yeah. um, that how I was treated and um, as a human being, yeah. as a refugee, um, and I have been valued all the um, rights, rights of speech, right of uh, religion, mm-hmm. which we never had, pra- never mm-hmm. practiced that mm-hmm. in our back home or where was, I mm-hmm. was born. Mm-hmm. Um, I was not able, we were not mostly a- able to um, practice our freedom of religion, freedom of um, uh, speech. Uh, but here we have all those. And plus, um, there are all, always opportunities for us to not support ourselves, but we can also support the other, those mm-hmm. who are in need. Mm-hmm. And that is amazing for me that mm-hmm. I have that opportunity. And that's why we came together with a group of volunteers and we established and uh, registered the uh, CHHS as a non-for-profit organization in order to help. So overall, my impression is absolutely amazing. And how do our winters compare to Afghani winters? Well, um, it's similar to that because yeah, okay. similar to Afghanistan because in Afghanistan we also have four seasons in yeah. most uh, most areas, yeah. not in the southern area, uh, but the central area is even the winter is worse than here. Uh, we have Can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, we have eight six to eight months winter, yeah. uh, especially in Hazara Jat. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that the Hazara people were uh, pushed uh, from cities to yeah. go to in the mountainous area where is life was really like it's North Pole. 
Yeah. Um, and uh, over there now Hazara people are because they are very hardworking people yeah. uh, they, they survived and also they make those areas a living area right. um, plus um, the weather overall is not a challenge for me but yeah. however even in Afghanistan because I myself I'm very sensitive to a cold weather yeah, yeah. <laughs> so overall that um, but plus uh, the weather the the Con uh, that uh, traffic is a, a challenge, especially in Toronto. It, 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 that, yes, that is. It certainly <laughs> is. It, is. it certainly is. Yeah. It certainly but is. but we have a lot of good things uh, mm -hmm. here, uh, which we easily we can forget the weather, yeah. the bad weather or the bad uh, traffic. Yeah. Um, so compared to other countries, um, yeah. we still very lucky that we are here in Canada and we have a lot of good opportunities and good things to think about rather than think about negative things such as weather. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're lucky to have you. I, I, I'll just, just wrap this up at, uh, at this point, but I want to give you one final, final question. Um, you're speaking to the, uh, the people of, who are listening to this uh, interview. You're speaking to people who are thinking about supporting Aura, and you're speaking to people who have supported Aura and have sponsored, sponsored refugees. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say to, uh, to them? Mm -hmm. uh, first, I wanted to uh, say thank you to Aura. I, we really appreciate. When I say we, it means that not only my, my family. We, on, on behalf of my family, we are very thankful to Aura with the, all the support that they have provided, not only with the sponsorship, but with the resettlement, which was also a challenge. And we are very thankful. And also, I would like to thank uh, uh, St. Mary uh, Anglican Church that was a co-sponsor in this my family case and they were very very helpful and i'm very thankful to them as well uh, for the people uh, that who have been assisted um, or not have been assisted we would i would like to tell them that always support aura always try to um, be connected with them in any way or any means that they can do because aura and organizations such as aura are the lifesaver of thousands and thousands of people who are in danger and they are at the level to, uh, to lose their life. Yeah, that's, that's well said, well said. Thank you very much for taking the time to, uh, to have this little uh, informal conversation and this uh, interview. And, and thank you for coming. Thank you for staying in Canada. Thank you and, so and much. For all uh, that you have, thanks uh, for having me yeah. here today here yeah. and to, 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 to listen to my story. And I'll, I, I'm really, really thankful for that. Wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for tuning in. Take care. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. Second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Gracious God. You show us your way and give us your divine life. May everything we do be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. And we'd like to thank you all for sending in your offerings. Thank you for the support, your support of the ministries of this church, St. Andrew Anglican in Alliston, a place of God's love. Thank you. The Lord's Prayer. As thy Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. And not you only, but also all those you love 
here and in the hereafter, forever and ever. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay well, enjoy this beautiful weather. God bless you.